Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. It is Sunday night. I'm Brooks Austin, the film guy, coming to you live from here in just north of Atlanta. I don't know why I told you where I am. I never do that. Um, but I've got a great show for you tonight. And guess what? I'm going to have some great shows coming for you just over the next month. We are a little over a month away from probably, not probably, I personally think it is the most highly anticipated season opener um, that Georgia's had in God knows how long. Obviously, Clemson, Georgia, September 4th, which means over the next month or so, well, a little over a month, I'm going to prepare you, the audience, like I would if I were the head football coach of the University of Georgia. Obviously, I'm not. Um, don't know a tenth of those guys do or what those guys do, but I think I'm pretty good at this stuff, and you guys seem to like this too. So we're going to milk this for everything it's worth. We are going to prepare you as audience members and as football fans better than you've probably ever been prepared for a football game ever before. You're going to know exactly what to expect for that game on September 4th because you came over here on YouTube and you watched us and especially if you've signed up for Patreon over there, patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin. We're going to give you a free teaser tonight of this offensive line preview. We're gonna look through everything that Clemson did against Notre Dame in that overtime loss last season, right? One of DJ Ugalele's two career starts. So it's very important that we evaluate that because it's the closest evaluation point that we're going to get to what you're going to see September 4th. Couple of points of note for you guys before we get into this. Obviously, they lost their left tackle last year um, and their center. They're starting left tackle and they're starting center. Two, obviously, key positions, right? One of your guys that protects the blind side of your quarterback. Everyone understands the importance of, the, of a starting left tackle and a solid starting left tackle. One thing that kind of goes overlooked oftentimes for most football fans is the importance of the center position that it's often referred to as the quarterback of the offensive line. It could not be any more true um, than that pure statement. That's the simplest way to put it, and you lose those two positions from a year ago. Your left tackle at Clemson last year, Jackson Carmen, I personally thought was one of the best offensive players that Clemson had last year. Obviously not a guy that a lot of people talk about, but he's a second-round draft pick this year uh, to the Cincinnati Bengals. So they shored up that left tackle spot um, in here, well, not left tackle because they got a, a really solid one up there at Cincy, but he'll slide in. He'll play somewhere. I'm telling you guys, a really good football player, and you're going to see him tonight. Uh, you're also going to see their new left tackle. He was playing right tackle last year. We're going to get a good look at him uh, on tonight's film study. We're not going to see their new center. He's number 55. He's a redshirt sophomore that will be starting for them. First career start against Georgia and against that interior defensive line for the Bulldogs. A um, couple of things about their offense, right? We're going to be talking about their offensive line play specifically tonight, but you're also going to learn a little bit about who they are, especially in the run game. This is a misdirection football team. I'm talking power. I'm talking counter. I'm talking outside zone, okay? That's their MO. The last thing they want to do is line up and play big boy football. They do not want to come downhill at you. They want to trick or, trick you, get your eyes off of where it needs to be, and they want to pull. They want to get on the edge. They want to play on good angles, and we're going to show you that tonight. I also think there is a massive, and I mean massive, weak, weak link on this offensive line unit, and I'm super excited to show you this tonight because I was borderline flabbergasted, and honestly, it's at a position on this offensive line that is really, really going to favor one of Georgia's heavy, heavy strengths defensively. So I'm super pumped to do it. I'm, hope, I'm hoping you as an audience member are super excited to see it as well. Please hit that thumbs up. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram up there on the top left-hand corner. And if you like tonight's film study, if you like what we're going to do over the next month leading up to this football game, I promise you there is no better place to be than patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin. All right, everybody ready? Dicko, we're ready? We got a free sub. We're going to probably get those throughout the night. Let's hold off on announcing them. I, I, I appreciate I'm going to go ahead and say it. I appreciate everyone that does those tonight, but I've got so much material to get through tonight, so I'm not going to be able to stop the show every time someone comes in and gives one of these. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I am extremely thankful for every single one of you guys that donates tonight, and it's an opportunity to grow our family over there on Patreon.com. So if you're one of those people watching tonight's show and you want to join in, guess what? 
There's going to be free sub opportunities flying through uh, on the Super Chats tonight. Feel free to hit me up on social media up there in that top left hand or top right hand corner um, and hop in my DMs. They're open both on Instagram and Twitter. Tell me you want one of those. We will get you one of those before the night's end. Okay. Appreciate you guys for being here. Hit that thumbs up. Let's get after it. Let's shut up. Let's grind some tape. All right. So I told you, we're going to be watching this Notre Dame game. It is to me the truest indication of what is about to happen uh, with Georgia coming up in this football game September 4th. It is by far, without a doubt, their best regular season matchup that they had all year last year, right? That ACC is kind of weak, especially really weak now that Notre Dame's out of it. But let's point out some of these changes. 79, he is gone, okay? 71 right here. We're going to talk about him a little bit later. He's going to be flipping over to the left side. The center is gone. We're going to get a new number 55 in there. And at right tackle over here, we're going to get a guy by the number of 64. Names don't care. I'm going to give you numbers except for Jackson Carmen. Dude's a freak. Okay, so starting left tackle, all ACC caliber football player, top 45 pick in the NFL draft, gone. Okay, right tackle, six foot two. That's not a joke. Six foot two. He's likely going to move over to the left side. And guess what? We're going to get an opportunity to see his ultimate replacement later on in this football game as well. We'll talk through these as we go through tonight. But I wanted to get those off of the off the top and just kind of let you know what their changes are um, immediately. Now, the other thing you're going to see about this offense, I told you off the off the rip, they are a misdirection football team. And a lot of people are saying, sitting here saying, well, what does that even mean? What is Brooks talking about? Why doesn't he talk in normal language? Well, I'm going to show you. Okay, most teams run counter this way, okay? They block down, they block back to this Mike linebacker, they pull and kick the guard, they pull and wrap the tackle, okay? That's how most teams like to run counter, okay? Most teams like to run Trey counter in a very similar way, Trey being T for the tight end, right? That's what we call it, okay? They're going to block back with the guard, they're going to combo block back to this linebacker, they're going to hinge with the backside tackle in Trey counter, okay? They're still going to pull the guard, they're going to motion the tight end out, and he's going to be the rapper, okay? That's Trey counter. Well, Clemson does something completely different. Every once in a while when they got good angles, right? They got a two-eye right here, and they got a three technique. So to make these angles just a little bit easier on everyone involved, they're going to pull the center, motion the tackle or the tight end in, in here, and let him be the rapper, okay? So it's just a little bit of a, of a differentiation point, right? They're not trying to make it harder than it has to be. They're trying to play on good angles. There you see the log block from the center, okay, and the wrapper from the tight end. I will tell you this tonight. Their tight ends are extremely heavily involved in this run game, okay, and they're no slouches. They got three really, really good ones. There you see 88, first play of the game, getting a lick on a third-round draft pick right here, number six from Notre Dame. You Georgia fans will know how good this football player is because he was the leading tackler against Notre Dame, uh, or against Georgia, rather, in that uh, you know highly anticipated matchup back in 2019, right, at home uh, in Athens. So just a simpler way, or a more complex way, rather, to run counter, pull in the center. But again, it's all about angles, right? When you're in here playing this two-eye, we don't want to have to work too hard. We want to make it easier on everybody else. We got a, a, a free man right here. The bubble is over the center. Let him get out, right? Let him be the one on the move. Just a, a nice little, you know, wrinkle in there from their offense coordinator, Tony Elliott. Now, they do do some interesting things. Obviously, I'm an O-line geek, right? You guys know this by now. They do some interesting things every once in a while with their technique on, on, on plays like this, right? Where here's that two eye again, as I roll it back on accident. Here's that two eye again for those who are uninitiated. Shade technique, right? One technique inside shoulder, two eye right there on the inside eye of the guard. Three technique out here. We got a four eye, a five, a seven, and a nine. Okay. I know I didn't write the numbers in there, but I hope you followed me. Okay. When you've got this two eye in here and you're trying to pass protect, as a guard, you've got to show heavy inside pressure. But I've never seen it done this way, where Buddy just completely leans in with his right shoulder, puts himself in really, really poor body positioning, okay? Really, really poor body positioning as I slow this down for you so you can get a better look at it. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. It was shocking to see this, and I'm going to try to pause it right as the ball snaps so you can see what he's doing. It's flabbergasting. Look at these angles. This is awful. That's not good. 
Okay, most of the time this ends up with this guard being flat on his butt because that that defensive tackle identifies this guy's leaning really, really bad. Luckily enough for this left guard, he stays up. But that I, that's something I saw on film and I get it. You're trying to show like sh give really heavy inside lean because you got a two. eye. I understand it. I've just never seen it executed like that. I highly doubt that's something they coach that way. Maybe that's something that the guard is overcompensating for. Okay. Now. If you're my defensive line group that I'm talking to right now, I, I just want to, it's something to note, first of all, okay? Anytime they do this kind of stuff, anytime they do this kind of stuff. Now, this guy's gone. Travis Etienne's obviously playing with uh, Trevor Lawrence down in Jacksonville. But anytime they do this type of stuff, four by one with the back, okay, off the line of scrimmage with trips in front of him into the boundary, okay? Something's happening over here. Something's happening over here, I promise you. Okay, most likely a screen. So just be a heads up there. Just a note for, for the weary. Okay, when you're watching it, September 4th, you can be like, Brooks told me something's coming here. And that's exactly what happens. But if you're my defensive line group, right, we're watching offensive line tonight. If, you, if I was coaching you, you'd be my defensive line group in the film study. Okay, just be aware that they're going to cut you in the screen game. They, they just are. It's a, it's a change up for them. So let's watch out for the knees. Let's, let's be, you know, light on our feet. Let's not rush upfield, which we're the University of Georgia, so we're not going to anyways. Again, I'm hypothetically speaking here. Just to let you know, they will cut you in the screen game. So it's something to pay attention to when you're out there on the field. Here we go. This right guard, okay, he is coming back. I think he's a senior. He's really, really top-heavy in the run game. Watch him right here. Really, really top-heavy, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, okay? When you get leaning like this, heavy, heavy, heavy over your toes, you're going to end up on your face nine times out of seven. I'm telling you that right now. Nine times out of seven, you're going to end up on your face, okay? You've got to bring, got to, got to, got to bring your hips with you, okay? Watch him. We're going to talk about this as well a little bit later. Noticing the slants. Notice in the slants, okay, the number one way to stop or try to stop a misdirection football team like this, slant them to death. Slant them to death, okay? And shallow slant them. What do I mean by that? And we're, we're ruining some of our notes later in the, in the show, but I want you to see these things as we go. Most teams like Mississippi State, right? Mississippi State heavy, heavy vertically slants, okay? What I mean by that is they're getting upfield, right? They're trying to create havoc in the backfield. That's not what you're trying to do against Clemson and a misdirection football team. What you're trying to do is what I like to call uh, horizontally slant or uh, shallow slant, in other words. Okay? I just want you to shift the gap. I don't want you to get upfield. I just want you to shift a gap. So when he's trying to take his inside zone steps or when this guy is trying to block down for a power or a counter, okay, his aiming point has now shifted right upon the snap of the football. That's what Notre Dame did in this football game, and they had really, really good success early on in the football game doing this. They pretty much stymied this run game that's really, really good from Clemson because number nine's a special, special college football player. Okay, they stymied it by doing this. Watch what these shallow slants do to these guards in these backside combos, okay? 41 played like a bat out of hell this entire football game, and I personally don't think he's anything the caliber of 99 95 or 88 at all, okay, from the University of Georgia. So you're good on that end. One thing I will also tell you about this football team, they got some athletes playing offensive line, okay? I call them fat elites, okay? Fat elites, especially this guy. Now, he's gone, okay? And this is the guy they're going to replace with this dude. He's a really, really great athlete as well. He has to be. He's six foot two. okay? He's six foot two and plays tackle for Clemson. He's a great athlete. Absolutely, no doubt about it, okay? But watch this. Watch these jokers move out in open space. These boys can roll, I'm telling you. Look at 79 out there. About got him a cake, okay? About got him a cake. If you want to play offensive line at Clemson, you best be a really good athlete, which means if you're playing defensive line against them, you best have a motor, okay? You're going to be running. I'm telling you that right now. You are going to be running more than you expect in this football game. They don't play a lot of high-paced stuff. They'll do what Georgia does every once in a while. If they need to, they can get into a no-huddle situation. But they are what we call a check-with-me offense. And here is a prime example of that. 
on this next clip, okay? <clears throat> We're going to do a lot of center talk tonight. I told you from the start, okay? Mic identifications are very, very important in the run game, okay? Very, very important in general, okay? Young centers, be able to identify who you are taking, who your offensive line is accountable for, okay? So on this play right here, we don't get an opportunity to see it, but they call Mike 40, okay? When you're watching football games and you hear, Mike 48, Mike 48, Mike 40, Mike 40. That's what they're doing. They're identifying Mike IDs, okay? They're trying to tell their offensive line. They're trying to tell their back, their quarterback, who they're working towards. Communication at its, at, at its finest degree, okay? The Mike ID here is 40. So what that means is you got a solo block here from 79. This front side combo between this left guard and this center is working backside to the A-gap linebacker, okay? They will work through this guy and try to get him, and these two are responsible basically for the two off the back. We got a backside fan call is what we would call that. Now, what that leaves is, that leaves 33 completely free. He is now on the running back. Number nine has 33, okay? And watch how that plays out. <clears throat> Something to note as this film study works, you saw the center come off immediately off that two eye into that, that Mike linebacker, Mike 40, okay? And you'll see 33 jump immediately into B gap. Wham, okay? Just something to note. You'll see exactly why I'm telling you. People are like, what, who gives a crap, Brooks? I don't know what a Mike ID is anyways. Well, now you do, okay? The other thing here is, always want to tell what they're trying to do schematically. Look, tight end in the mix, running back in the mix. Okay, this is their first touchdown of the game. This is their first deep shot of the game. If you watch my DJ uh, Uyunglele, DJ Uyunglele uh, film study, you'll notice that early on in this football game, they did a whole bunch of slants. They did a whole bunch of screens. They did a whole bunch of bubbles. Um, things to get this guy warmed up. Rolled him a little bit, okay, got him loose, and then second possession, they took their first deep shot. Well, you need to notice seven-man protection. When they are trying to take shots down the field, they will leave the tight end into block. They will leave the running back into block, and they will take their bombs, okay? That's no different than most college football teams. Honestly, it's not different than most NFL football teams. When they want to take deep shots, they want to protect them, right? We're trying to get guys down the field, so we want to make sure we protect them to get down the field. Now, told you, there's a liability on this offensive line. And I hope his parents ain't watching tonight, because we, from this point forward, it's going to be nothing but look how bad this dude is, okay? It's going to get ugly. It's going to get real bad. So just hold on. But you're going to see why I'm pointing it out because, honestly, Georgia's defensive strength this year is three guys interiorly. It's Jordan Davis. We know that. It's Jalen Carter and it's Devontae Wyatt. I think they've got three of the best interior defensive line combos. That trilogy, you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone better, okay? I know – Clemson's got some good ones, right? Brzee and Xavier Thomas, they're good. That's two of them, okay? Miles Murphy plays defensive end. He's, the, he's their Trayvon Walker, essentially, but much, much better at this point in his career, even as a, a rising sophomore, okay? So Georgia's strength matches up with a major, major liability from Clemson, and you're going to see it moving forward. Here we go. Take a look at him. Watch 65 over there at left guard. He getting walked. Okay, walked and turned sideways immediately. Okay, immediately. Now, luckily, he gets some help from that tight end. Again, seven-man protection solves a lot of if issues. But anytime a guard in pass protection is at what appears to be, that's 90, so what, a 45-degree angle headed towards the sideline, that's bad news. Okay, it's bad news. And this guy gets put into these types of body positions constantly. Constantly, constantly, constantly in pass protection. 65, liability. An absolute liability. They are going to attack this man with everything they have. I promise you. Because guess what? Notre Dame, I'm going to show you. Notre Dame figured it out within two series. Within two series, they started sending everything they got at him. The other thing I noticed on tape, they'll change this as the game goes on. But typically... Okay, offensive line play is in most of the time what we call three versus two slides, okay? Three versus two surfaces, okay? Pass protection, unless it's some type of slide protection, some type of things like that. Pass protection most of the time 
for defensive lines, especially against even fronts, right? One, two, three, four. This is an even front from Notre Dame. Against even fronts, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get a three-man slide versus a two-man slide, okay? So most of the time, this is how this works. The center works to his front side A gap, where the two I is, provides inside pressure with his eyes in B gap, and then this side becomes the three-man slide. One, two, and three off of space, okay? Whereas the two-man slide over here ends up into what we call big on big, all right? If that makes sense. I know that's really, really technical, but it's important here. What it causes, and we do this in, in the offensive line world by drawing bubbles. It's the best way I know how to teach it, okay? These three have these three, right? These two have these two. So there's a bubble over here and a bubble over here, which leaves a vacancy right there in the right side of your gap. Does that make sense? Okay, draw your bubbles and you'll find your alleys, basically is the way I like to teach it, okay? Now, why is that important? Because instead of showing and giving front side A gap pressure, this center immediately kicks slides left <clears throat> off the snap, immediately, watch him. Now, as a defense coordinator, I see this in the box, and what I'm thinking, and you see, look, there's the, there's the alley, right? I showed you. There is going to be a massive void. Whoops. A massive void opening up in this offensive line. There it is. As I'm switching colors on you guys. Y'all like that? Okay. There's going to be one. Now, if you keep doing these tendencies, you keep doing these three-man, two-man slides away from the two-eye, right? Defense coordinator is going to find it. Defense coordinators are going to find it, and they're going to start sending that house into that A-gap, and you're going to see it immediately here in just a second. Now, the other thing I respect about this offense coordinator, outside of how well he protects his, uh, his quarterbacks, is the fact that they make it really, really, really easy on their offensive line at times. Really, really easy. Where they're just like, hey, guys, almost very similar to what Auburn does or used to under Malzahn that now UCF will do where they'll just use the entire offensive line as a decoy. They'll just run them left. Just say, hey guys, just run to the sideline. Okay, take as many guys, influence as many guys as you possibly can and just run to the sideline, okay? They do a very similar thing at Clemson, except they'll just turn right back around and throw the screen over there and now they're getting involved. So you'll see it's a very heavy misdirection offense like I told you from the jump, okay? Offensive line, just run left. Don't really worry about blocking anybody. We're gonna throw the ball back over there. Now let's get out and let's block some people in space, right? But even though they're making it really, really easy on this offensive line, even though that's the case, 65 still getting dog whipped. I mean, dog whipped, rag tossed, absolutely run amok out here in this football game. Absolutely. Getting his lunch money taken on a lot of these snaps. Watch him. I mean, he about falls over. He looks like he got shot in the chest. Oh, we got some more. The next, the next note just says 65 is so bad. Even on some more trickery form. Here we go. Watch our liability in here. Watch our liability in here. Nobody. Buy a daggum ticket, son. Buy a ticket to the game. Go sit in the stands. What are we doing? More trickery. More misdirection from Clemson, right? Getting a pin and pull, basically. Georgia runs this, too. They're going to try to down block, try to pull out, right? Try to down block, try to pull out. The only problem is 65 looks like, looks like my granddad out there trying to pull, okay? Liability, I'm telling you. Absolute liability. And this dude, I know we're not here to watch Notre Dame. This, this Kyle Hamilton, who's from Georgia, Okay, from, I, th I want to say the Forsyth area, honestly. Um, look it up for me, Dicko. Find out where he's from. Um, from Georgia. He's a swan. Yeah, extremely special. Extremely special football player. Going to play a long time in the NFL. He will be a first-round draft pick this coming up year because of stuff like this. He just shoots gaps and just runs stuff down. That's Super that's long. Atlanta. Is he from Marist? I want to say he's from Marist. What? Find out the high school, Dicko. That's all I care about. Marist, yeah. 
He is from Marist. You know, I'm, I'm fairly decent in my job. Fairly decent every once in a while. I'm okay. You're right. I am okay. Now, I told you, when you get into these heavy, obvious, predetermined slides that we know what's going on, well, guess what? We're going to start firing stuff in the A-gap. We're going to start figuring it out, okay? Just like this, okay? A, a simple stunt. Three technique, get your butt up field, linebacker wrap into that A-gap that we know is going to open up. We know that sucker is going to part like the red C color, pun intended. We know, okay? They're going to slide this way. He's going to slide this way. There's going to be a massive alleyway right there for us to hit, okay? Georgia does this as good, if not better, than anybody you'll watch on tape. The difference here that Notre Dame messes up, and I promise you Georgia will not do it, okay? See how 57 just lumped inside? Ain't no reason to go inside, brother. We just sent a body into a gap, and that's why he's flushed out. If you just did your job and stayed upfield and held your gap like Georgia preaches, like nobody's business, guess who just walked into a sack? You did, buddy. But instead, 57 right here wants to jump back inside because he wants to play hero football. That ain't what Georgia does, okay? But Georgia will throw this game stunt. I promise you that right now. Georgia will. They pound A-gaps harder than anybody. I promise you. In the blitz game, okay? Now we got a quarterback leaking out who's really, really good on the run. Really good on the run. He makes NFL all-pro type stuff type throws on the run doing stuff like this even as a true freshman in his first career start on the road in a game that was way way more uh, packed than 20 percent 938 what are we looking at now Georgia I promise you here's what I'm talking about when I say a check with me offense DJ walks to the line ready set hut ready set hut ready set hut Turns around, looks to the, the sideline, right? Says, Coach, what do you want? Coach relays it in, gives him the feed. He comes back to the line of scrimmage, tells everybody what he wants. Now, I promise you, from the box, they notice this right here. Two eye, wide seven, Mike basically in a one tech. Basically head up over the center, essentially. So what does that leave? Well, any dummy can see there's a massive bubble right there in B-gap, right? Massive bubble. Right there in B-gap. So what does Clemson do? Clemson comes to the line of scrimmage and says, hey, hey, easy, easy. We're going rhino, rhino, which is probably whatever their call is, which is just a call for basic inside zone. Let's hit it. Now, the difference is Georgia doesn't do this at all. Georgia will stack that linebacker here. They will stack that linebacker here. The safety will be back in the middle of the field, and they'll play it. Straight up base defense or mint defense is what they call it. They might give it a zero, right? With a four eye out here with the jack or a four eye here with the jack on the back side and a three tech. Okay? That's how Georgia will play it with the linebacker standing right there. Let's redraw all that for you, right? So here's how this is gonna look. This is gonna look like 44 right here, right? This is gonna look like 99 right here, head up over the zero. Okay? This is gonna look like 95 right here. Okay? This is gonna look like number four right here. Now, Nicobe will be standing right here, and Quay Walker will be standing right here. So guess what you can't do? You can't just run up into B-gap like this, like you're about to see. Okay, so Georgia ain't giving this look at all. At all. They're going to have to find another way to skin this cat. Because ain't, they ain't just going to give you nine yards like this right here. They're not. And my God, nine is special. I really, I, they, they re, they're having to replace three really, really special players, right? You obviously had to replace 16, number one overall draft pick. He's gone. But guess what? I'm, I'm not saying it's okay, but it's okay. Five's really, really good. This guy, irreplaceable for their offense over the last four years. If you've watched him, he is probably the most special football player that they had. And Trevor's really, really good. This guy carried their offense at times. That's no joke. This dude right here, elite. Elite, elite, elite. Okay? We good? You standing up because you're a big guy? That chair hurting you? Yeah, that, that, that chair is brutal. Okay? Did like seven months of shows in that chair before my dumb butt got up and decided, hey, let's buy a chair. Now, I told you, this guy, he's limited, right? Limited, limited length-wise, measurables-wise. Okay, if you watched our Nolan Smith film study, which only the Patreon folks got to see because it was behind a paywall, 
Number four for Georgia really, really struggles with length, okay? He's got less than impressive measurables physically, okay? He's only about 6'2 and a quarter, maybe 6'2 and a half. He's only about 227 pounds when the season starts. He'll probably be about 234 this year when the season starts. By the end of the season, he'll probably be about 226, 227, okay? But he really struggles with really long guys, right? Leatherwood gave him real problems on the edge, okay? Well, as this guy flips over to left tackle, he's 6'2", and guess what he struggles with? He struggles with length. So honestly, in the biggest game in his first career start for the University of Georgia, Noah Smith might have the best matchup he's ever had. Okay, the best matchup he's ever had. Because this guy's not going to give him problems with length. Because guess why? This guy struggles with length. Look at him. Okay, he's whiffing. Why is he whiffing? Because his arms can't get there. His arms cannot get there. Because he's, he's 6'2". Right? God only gave him so much. He has to win with athleticism and footwork. Similar to a guy like Isaiah Wynn. You, for you Georgia fans. Know that one very, very well. This guy doesn't have the long arms. Nolan is going to be able to hold his own on that front side of the run game, I believe, based off what I see on tape. And that's why what I do here is extremely, extremely valuable. Now, back to 924, because I got a coaching point on the mic IDs. What was it? I think we already did it. Hold on. We watch it. Yep, there it is. Okay. Boom. See him pointing? He's calling Mike 40. That's where their combo is working. I don't know why I put this in here. I think I already walked you through it. Told you that George is not giving this look, so I'm good with it. We can probably move on. Let me double check with that. Yeah. Okay, we're good. That's where the combo is working. I'll show you what it means later. Did y'all see how he was pointing to the inside linebacker right here, 40, when the ball is going a run play, okay? I'm always checking for tendencies here. 70, 62, pointing at 40. Mike 40, Mike 40, okay? Just remember that. Stow it away for a little bit later. Tonight's about how well your, 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 your uh, mental retention rate is. Okay? That's what great offensive coordinators do. Excuse me. That's what great defensive coordinators rather do in the red zone. Georgia will do it as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Safety walked in two. He's going to load the box. He's going to play man-to-man outside. He being Kirby and Dan. They're going to play man-to-man, bump and run, Send the house in the red zone. It's the MO. It's what they do. They run cover zero in the red zone like most good football teams do. Get into that interior of this offensive line. I have said it over and over again and showed you over and over again that this is their liability. This really, really is their liability. But this interior of this offensive line and pass protection is very, very gettable. They are very, very, very gettable. Now, I, you know, that's why I like to do stuff like this. I really love to do stuff like this because everyone cracks on Notre Dame, right? Everybody loves to watch Notre Dame get their brains beat in. And guess what? I'm one of those people too. I think it's funny. Not even going to lie. I think it's funny. But when you watch them on tape and really dive into them, they're pretty daggone well coached. They're pretty daggone well coached. I don't know what they saw on tape to know that this was coming, but they're clearly tipped off here. Hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. Now, their palms are to the sky, which nine times out of 10 means palms coverage for most defenses, except they have no palms look over here. They got nothing, except for the butt to the sideline reading through two. Okay, but that safety ain't getting all the way over to take ver vertical if he's got to, I promise you. So, I don't know what they're looking at, but they know something that we don't know. Because six is about to blitz like a bat out of hell right here in the alley and basically pick this ball off. It's a toss sweep, and he grabs it out of the air and takes it for six. So I don't know what they saw. I really don't. But they saw something, and I got to know. I, I, I want to know. I want to call Notre Dame and be like, what y'all see? I just want to know. What y'all see on tape? Was it the stacked look? Was it the condensed formation? What, I, what was it? What, it, what about this? Tells you, hey, oh, oh, I know what it might be. Look at the alignment. Look at the alignment of the running back. He ain't that far out for no reason. He's that far out because he's doing this one, right? Maybe, maybe, just maybe. But look at that alignment. He's matched up with the outside hip of the tackle. So maybe that's what they saw on tape. 
Who knows? Just something to pay attention to. It's another clean look at this counter that I was telling you about earlier. Okay, they're going to pull. They're going to pull center. They're going to pull a kick center. They're going to wrap H back. Okay, Trey counter with the center. Again, just a little funky difference in what they do versus what everybody else does typically. They are one thousand percent a misdirection football team. It's what they want to do. It's their MO. Again, if you make them, if you shut down all this misdirection stuff, if you shallow slant them like I've suggested over and over and over again, you will force them into playing an inside zone football game. And guess what? They do not want to do that. Okay? You think they recruit at this exceptional level, and they do. Don't get it wrong. But they don't do it with big heavies up front. They do it with okay guys up front, and they coach them up. They train them up. They develop them into really good football players. But they ain't got the Andrew Thomases, the Isaiah Wilsons, the Solomon Kenleys, uh, you know, the Ben Clevelands, right? These big mass movers, that's not what they got. They ain't even got, they, they don't have a Jamari Sawyer here, honestly. Okay, so they don't have these big mass movers. They have these guys that they're trying to do a bunch of trickeration stuff with, okay? Even stuff like this, where they're just going to tell the entire offensive line, hey, just run right, just go. Everybody just go right. Look, look, the left tackle ain't doing nothing, Okay? Look at this. The left tackle is doing absolutely nothing. Watch him. All they're doing is they're rolling their quarterback right because they know he's special, and they're waiting for this Dover from this number two receiver to get clear. That's it. Watch him. Watch that left tackle. He is just running around in la-la land. He don't touch a soul. Again, they are a misdirection football team. That's all they're doing. They want to make it easy. They don't want to make it hard. They don't want to do the grunt work. They want to do the trickeration stuff. 65, hot garbage. Left guard, hot garbage. Here's another uh, example of him getting put in a really, really bad body position. Guess what? By a linebacker. This linebacker's walking his mess. Walking his mess into the quarterback right here. No bueno, guys. I think he is 100% the liability that if I'm Dan Lanning, I'm telling Jordan Davis, hey, buddy. All that money that you sacrificed coming back, this is your football game to go get it. National television, everybody watching, every NFL scout you could ever imagine going to be watching this football game. Hell, half of them going to be in attendance. Go have seven or four tackle for losses. Go get a couple sacks, and let's, let, let's get you locked up in that first round, okay? That, that's what I think I would do. I, again, if I'm talking to you right now, Jordan, that's what I would do. You got, you got an opportunity to go eat. Devontae Wyatt, same thing. Jalen Carter, go, go be that all-SEC player I think you can be in this football game right here. Again, man, you can really start sitting down. This one don't get home, but you can really see that Notre Dame, and we're, we're about into the midway through the second quarter right here. We're almost at halftime. You can really start to tell that Notre Dame noticed from the box, hey, that's where we need to be. We need to get there right now. Stop messing with this dude. He's good. Stop messing with this dude. He's really, really good. Go attack these three guys, okay? Go attack these three guys and make nine stuff his nose into that A-gap because I guarantee you he don't want to do it, okay? So the box noticed it. Brooks noticed it on tape. You now see it. They obviously started attacking A-gaps every which way they can. This time it was a wrapper from number nine, okay? Nine's going to come in there just like that. Now he gets stopped this time, but they're going to get him. They're going to get him here in a little bit. Really good ball. <laughs> he's special, man. I'm telling you, he's really, really special. We're not here to watch him tonight. We'll get to him again later. I'm going to go find some more film study on him. What we got? Yeah, I, like I told you from the start, this quickly, as I was taking notes, this really, really quickly turned into, look how hot garbage 65 is. Left guard again. Watch him. Pulling, doing nothing. It's, guys, it's bad. I'm telling like, you turn on Clemson tape, and you're like, I mean – College ball playoff, four years running or whatever, couple time national champion. They got to be good every position. It ain't the case. It ain't the case. There is a lemon in every batch, and he is the one. Okay, he one hundred percent is the one. I'm telling you. Hmm. No bueno. 15-23. Guys, here's another example. When, when a football team's doing all this funky stuff, 
all this funky stuff. Even when you guess wrong, okay, I think they're running quarterback sweep essentially this way. Notre Dame is going to shallow slant this way, okay? And again, shallow slants, it's not heavy, okay? It's not sharp. It's more of, hey, just shift a gap. Just shift a gap and then read and react, right? You were responsible for C gap, now you're responsible for B. You were responsible for B gap, now you're responsible for A. Plain and point and simple, right? Keep your shoulders square as you get there and win. Even when you guess wrong, okay? Even when you guess wrong, even as you're slanting right while the offense is running to your left, guess what? You're going to throw off their non, I'm not going to say they're non-athletic. Interiorly, they're not. Their tackles are really good athletes. Interiorly, I don't think they're special, okay? Again, you guessed right, and you still left 65 on his bum. Look at this. Excuse me, you guessed wrong. TFL. TFL. Because as you went right, he went left, and he had no idea what to do. Except fall over. Except fall over. I would shallow slant this football team until they had to line up and play traditional offensive line play. Just run inside zone. You're going to have to. Against us, you're going to have to. We're going to shallow slant you so much that you're going to have to get away from everything you want to do. Counter, power, misdirection, bull crap. Okay? Here's the protection change. I told you it was coming, okay? They're good football coaches too, okay? They're really good football coaches too. When we started this film session, I told you they were going three by two in their, in their kick slide. They were sending the three-man surface away from the two-eye, okay? Away from the two-eye. Now, as they start getting their butt whooped, A-gap pressure starts really giving them problems, now they're going to send it back the other way. They're going to send big on big this way, okay? They're good coaches too. But here's the dead giveaway. I'm telling you right now, if y'all want to become smarter football fans, okay? If you want to become smarter football fans as you're watching the game of football, you only got to watch one guy. You only got to watch one guy. The guy who starts to play, just watch him. He'll tell you everything you need to know, okay, if you know what you're looking for. And this is what you're looking for right here. It's Mike IDs. Who's he pointing at? Watch him. Okay? Points at the mic first, right? Points at this guy. It's pointing at him, okay? Watch as the play develops. He says, oh, whoa, whoa, wait, hold on. Nope, nope, this guy. Okay? So now he's pointing all the way out here. What did I show you? I told you to remember. What I, what did I told you about Mike IDs early in the football game? In the run game, who were they IDing? In the run game, they were IDing him, right? They were saying, Mike 40, Mike 40. We're going to the Mike linebacker, the true middle linebacker. And now all of a sudden, midway through the third quarter, they're calling this guy? Why? Well, here's why. Because they're pass protecting. Tendency identified. They're pass protecting. They wouldn't run block all the way out to this outside backer. They want to call him in the pass pro. So that's where they send it. Okay, so what does that tell you as a defense, a defense or a defensive player, right? A, it's now a pass. So as a defensive lineman, if we're paying attention, if our, if our linebackers especially are paying attention, now we know we're on full go, okay? Now we know we're keying in to a pass play. Okay, here comes the check. Off of, or the center, or the, excuse me, the line judge is going to allow the center to stand back up. He's going to go through his mic IDs. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, now he points out this way. So what that tells you is no way, no way they are pushing all the way to 40 on an inside zone scheme. They're not. They are not running the ball this way. Because I showed you earlier in the football game, if they do want to run the ball into this look, what do they do? They call Mike 33. They send this guy out here, and they leave 40 in B gap for the running back to make miss. That's their MO. That's what they've done on tape for two and a half quarters at this point. So when the center comes to the line of scrimmage and now all of a sudden he's pointing out here, pass play, baby. They're three-man surfacing this way. They're going to big on big out here. They're going to leave 33 right down the pipe. Right down the pipe. It's them little things. It's them little things. Okay? Here we go. Watch it. Boom. There's 33 free. For nine to pick up. Now, he don't get home, but everybody else does. Everybody else does. 
telling you, if you start watching the centers, they'll tell you everything. Okay, the really, really good centers, they call every down, every time they go out there, even when there's not a mic ID. On powers, the counters, there's really not one. They're not working anybody. They're working their, their track, as we call it. Okay? Same thing here on 1723. Okay? He points all the way out here. So now what does that tell you? Now they're sending the three-man slide this way. I mean, guys, it's, it's, it's as clear as day. It's clear as day. Because when the heat of the battle starts, and I hope, you, I hope I'm doing a good enough job explaining this. Dicko, am I doing a good enough job explaining this? I think I am. Okay? In the heat of the battle, humans, or offensive linemen are humans too. They're just, they're just going, right? The, 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 the game's moving really, really fast for them. You see them point all the way out over there? See them point all the way out to this little linebacker that's hiding behind here? You can't really see them? They're sending the slide this way. They're big on big on the backside. Okay? So again, let's draw our bubbles. This is when it helps you as a defense or a defense or as a defensive coordinator to identify these things, okay? These three are working this way, right? These two are working this way. What does that leave? It leaves a really big alleyway right there in the backside A gap. That's what we need to attack if we're a defensive coach. Every single time. That's what we need to attack, okay? Winning is in the margins. It is in the margins, 100%. If you can find these things on tape, you will win. You will win on a really, really consistent basis. Film study is paramount to this game of football. It 100% is. Now, I told you. What time we got? We got about eight minutes left. Okay. Ah, we'll go fully till 10. We'll give you a full hour show tonight because we got that juice, baby. Okay. This guy right here is their new starting right tackle. I don't know why he came in this game. 71 left. This guy's gone. Okay, so 71 will be here this year. 64 will be there. Um, our liability is now out of the game. He limped off. Lose a limp. Okay, so we ain't got to watch the left guard be boo-boo no more. Okay, this, it's this 54 guy ain't that bad. I watched the rest of this football game. He's not terrible. Um, so we get a good eval on their new starting right tackle, right? Everybody wants to know who he is. I don't know his name. You can Google it. Okay, he's not a bad football player. I'll tell you. But he's not super athletically gifted, okay? Not super athletically gifted, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a brief second. Man, it's good to be back on this board. I told you, not to me, this the, the replacement of Etienne's the 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 most crucial portion of their offense. This it, for me, it goes biggest loss number one, second biggest loss number two. This left tackle, and then as weird as it sounds. 16 for me is the third biggest loss just because this number five is very special. Very, very special. I don't know what 71 is going to look like left tackle. I don't know what their running back situation looks like, but I promise you it ain't this dude. Because this dude got, what, 80, 85% of their carries over the last couple of years. So it ain't like they've been bell cow or they ain't, ain't like they've been doing the, the, the stable type of approach that Georgia does. But here's what I'm talking about with how special a running back is or how a special running back changes everything for your offense, okay? Where's the hole? Whoops, let's put it in slow mo. Where is the hole? That's my question. I don't, I don't see it, okay? I don't see it, but somehow he does. He turns what should be a negative play into a plus five, which most people are like, oh, it's just a five yard game. At least it's not an 80 yard touchdown. These are sometimes more important than the big breakers. Any Yahoo can make the big breakers. The special football players, as I have a terrible time finding it for you, the special football players do this. As backside A gap, my aiming point closes up, I can just find the thinnest of margins, okay? I can jump over the trash beneath my feet, and I can turn it into a six-yard game. This is what really, really special football players do. Where is the hole? Linebacker leaking over into A gap. There's a whole bunch of trash in the backside A gap. Where's it at? Etienne's going to find it. Nine times out of ten, he's going to find it. Jump over some trash, run a little bit through an arm tackle, get some yards after contact. Dude's special. Okay? Here's what I'm talking about with 64 over here at right tackle. He doesn't look like an incredible athlete. So, if I am Adam Anderson, who will be the guy over the right tackle, if y'all have noticed, 19 does all of his work over the right tackle. All of it. That Sam position stays over the right tackle. The Jack who was 13 over the last couple of years, is now number four. 
he will live over the left tackle, period, point blank. They don't do much flip-flopping, okay? They will do all of their work for number 19 over this right tackle. I don't think this guy's got a really, really, like, bouncy, twitchy kick slot. Look at it. His feet are kind of doing this, right? Watch his feet. His feet are real heavy. They're real kind of slow, right? They're kind of, they, they have a, a major sound effects, right? <coughs> Excuse me. I don't want to hear you kick sliding as an offensive tackle. I, w I just want to see it. I don't want to have to hear boom, 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 boom. I don't want to hear that. I want to see a nice, fluid, easy kick slide. I don't see that from 64. But this guy does it. Watch 79. This dude's elite, okay? Watch his kick slide, and then we'll go over to 64. Watch 79 first. Boom, boom, boom. Nice, patient. Redirect looks great. Incredible athlete out on the space. I mean, dude's a freak, okay? Watch 64. Doesn't look quite there, right? Kind of laboring, right? You see the whole body move up and down as he's kick sliding. It's not what I want to see. Now, what I will give this young man some credit for, and something I admire when I watch offensive line play, I love watching smart football players, man. I do. Look, point now. He just got in the football game, right? We just told you 71 left for some random reason. We're almost done. Watch. He's pointing out overhangs. He's got him. Watch him. Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay. Watch him redirect on this football play. Okay. Doesn't chase the one he knows he can't go get. Okay. Watches his guy who he points to, right? Seven is his guy. When your guy drops to space, we got to find work immediately, which means we don't want to keep sliding. We don't want to cre keep creating space. We want to stop in our tracks and find work. Watch how quickly he does it. Okay, we'll put it in slow-mo just so we can really observe. Here we go. Pointing, that's my guy. I'm going to kick to him, and I'm going to kick to this spot, okay? Not to him. I'm going to kick to the spot. He drops back inside, eyes inside. Not going to chase the, the linebacker that's much faster than me. I'm going to pick the guy I can actually handle, and we're going to make a play, okay? Ungodly throw from five. Ungodly throw. Stupid. Makes no sense. Look at this. Get out of here. That's what I'm saying. It's like, Trevor, great. It's the next number one overall pick. They're all right. They got, they got the next one. It's okay. They're going, they, don't feel sorry for Clemson for losing number 16, Okay? Last play we're going to watch of him. His tech's really clean, okay? 64's tech is really, really clean. So now he's got this guy over the tight end, right? And he's got a three technique for, uh, over his guard to his left. So what he's going to do is, instead of kick sliding out immediately, right? Instead of gaining ground as, as fast as he can, what he's going to do is, he's going to set with heavy inside pressure. He's going to help his guard out so this guy doesn't get the, the ring ran on him, right? He's going to help his guard out, keep an inside pressure while being really, really patient on this guy who is not in a rushing position to get off the ball and then try to get after the passer, okay? This is good stuff from 64. Smart football player, aware football player, the tech is clean, not a great athlete. All of which, to me, favors Adam Anderson. I think, he can run, I think Adam Anderson can run the hoop on just about anybody, but 71, the guy who was playing right tackle in this game, that's his bag. He, he wants you to speed rush. I mean, he, he damn sure don't want, to, want a bull rush or a long arm, which he's going to get a whole bunch of from Nolan Smith and Trayvon Walker on the left side. This guy, the last thing he wants to see is a freak out there that can run around him. Okay, Dicko, give me that closing screen. Let's tell the nice folks, uh, you know, goodbye for the night. All right, so I'm telling you, if y'all enjoyed this, I got oodles more. Okay, we, we did one position group. Okay, we're going to flip-flop from offense to defense back and forth. We're going to save that defensive line for last from Clemson because I think it's the best in the country, and I'm really excited to watch it. Front seven in total. We'll probably watch some linebackers just a little bit one night, but we're really going to spend some time on the front seven as a whole from Clemson, and it'll be our last one. I want you guys to sleep the week of that football game with that one. Okay, Probably won't be able to eat or sleep knowing how much some of you guys love your Georgia Bulldogs, because they're really, really good. This offensive line is fairly good, okay? But you, I think you learned a lot about them tonight. A, left guard liability. B, what their identity is, who they are, what they want to do. Okay, they want to be a misdirection football team. I also think I showed you where your advantages are defensive line-wise for the University of Georgia. I think your interior defensive line is going to wreak havoc 
wreak havoc all game. I think Adam Anderson, if 64 is indeed the starting right tackle, I think he's going to get home a lot on speed rushes. Okay, maybe not complete sacks, but he's going to push that pocket, or he's going to make uh, Ugalele, Uyunglele. I did it all night. Uyunglele move up into the pocket. Okay, I think Nolan Smith's got an advantage for the first time in his life, measurables wise, uh, first time in his collegiate life. Um, so if you enjoyed this, I promise you, you will love what we have moving forward throughout the month. Okay, so stick around with us, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I've pretty much decided that I'm going to give all of this to the YouTube audience to get you hooked on this, on this drug that is these film studies. Because guess what? When the season starts, they're all going to Patreon. All of them. You're going to buy eight to ten minutes on YouTube. Sorry. That's all I can give you. Okay? You Patreon guys, I don't want you to not feel special. I'm going to do additional film studies. I've already decided that. It's more work for me, but I tweeted out, prepare for the grind you've never seen before. It's going to be absurd the rest of the year. I'm super excited for what we've got planned for this year, um, and I hope you all are here with us, both on YouTube and Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Brooks Austin. The link is in the bio. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Brooks Austin, the film guy. I'm out of here.